we're going to get ready this morning to uh, get into the Word of God, and we still continue a series of teaching talking about the wisdom of God, teaching from the wisdom of God. Amen? All right. Hallelujah. Well, let's go to Proverbs, the 23rd chapter and the second verse, and we're talking about the wisdom of God. Now, we're going to subtitle this teaching, this series of teaching, for you to get an understanding that the wisdom of God is uh, Christ Jesus. He is our wisdom. And also the wisdom of God is the word of God. I want you to understand, we're going to kind of deal with some lines of teaching, understand about that, that the wisdom of God, it literally is, it absolutely is the word of God. You can't separate the two from uh, one another. So we're going to get into the word of God and just really uh, get a good understanding about this here. Amen. All right, Proverbs, the 22nd, the 23rd chapter and the 12th verse, and we're going to be reading from the uh, easy-to-read version of the Bible, the easy-to-read version of the Bible. Now, I really want you to get, get a good understanding. In this teaching, uh, uh, grasp the understanding that, that, the, that the wisdom of God, it is the Word of God, and it is Christ Jesus himself, the wisdom of God. So when you, So as you receive in the wisdom of God, and it begins to, to work in your life, understand that that's, it's the word of God working in your life and Christ Jesus working in your life. Amen? You want to get an understanding of that. Amen? Because it's very important to get that, that type of understanding. All right, Proverbs, the 23rd chapter and the 12th verse, read, reading from the easy reading, easy read version of the Bible, says, listen to your teacher and learn all you can. Now, one thing we want to look at also here in this teaching, that wisdom is designed by God to teach you. It's your teacher. Uh, you, you have to be willing to, to understand that, that the wisdom of God is your teacher. Now, the best way to benefit from the wisdom of God, you got to make a decision that it will be your only teacher. You don't look for another teacher to teach you. Um, you all, this teacher will teach you everything you need to fulfill your life. Everything you need to understand God's will and purpose for your life. Everything you need to know who you are, what your, what your purpose is in life. And you know, that's something that, that, uh, 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 that the world is really struggling with now. Um, the, the truth and the understanding about uh, what their purpose is in life. A lot of people are in search of their purpose for life. I, don't know, I know that I was, and, uh, and that's really what got me to the place because I, you know, I, I was living my life at about 27 years old, and I was just kind of running, you know, what is my purpose in life? I'm just going, look like I was just going through the routines of just living and existing. Uh, but I know deep down on the inside of me that that question was stern, what is my purpose in life? What um, I, am I here for? What am I going to do? What am I going to accomplish, accomplish in life? And, um, and what does life have for me? Is it just, you know, you live, eat, drink, and be merry, and tomorrow you die? Uh, that's not what I was, that, that, I, that type of thought wasn't satisfying me. And I believe it's not satisfying a lot of people that are struggling with the, the understanding of what is their purpose in life. So what we're going to do, get ready to understand from this teaching, get an understanding that... Uh, the, the wisdom of God is going to help you by teaching you God's will and purpose for your life, what God created you for, amen? And you'll never be satisfied. You'll never really be satisfied until you really get a, a hold of that, until you get an understanding of that, until you get knowledge of that and begin to start plant, applying it in your life. You'll never, never be satisfied, amen? But it is God's will for you to be completely satisfied. It is God's will for you to be completely satisfied. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I, I deeply desire to be satisfied with the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding of God's will and purpose for my life. Amen. Glory to God. And you that are, are, are following us on Facebook, we hope you say the same thing too. Amen. Because you really want to know what God's will and purpose is for your life. All right, we're going to look at Proverbs, the, the uh, third chapter and the fifth verse. Now, we're going to approach this here with understanding that wisdom is designed by God to teach you. 
You don't need another teacher. All you need is the wisdom of God. All you need is the word of God. All you need is an understanding of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. And the wisdom of God, the word of God, and Jesus Christ, they're all one. They're all in one. Amen. So you might, you're just going to get one teacher. He's going to, you're going to get taught the wisdom of God. You're going to get taught the word of God. You're going to get taught about Christ in you, the hope of glory. You're going to get it all from one teacher. Amen. One source. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless God. All right. Now, the wisdom of God is developed for our minds. We're going to look, we're going to get an understanding. The wisdom of God, it addresses our minds, our thoughts, our imaginations, our wills. Amen. That's what the wisdom of God does. Amen. It's designed by God to do that. Uh, all right. Proverbs, the third, first chapter and the third through the fifth verse, reading from the easy read, read version of the Bible, says, they will teach you, talking about uh, the wisdom of God, the word of God, uh, Jesus Christ. They will teach you to develop your mind in the right way. You will learn to do what is right and do uh, and, and, and to be honest and fair. These proverbs, the fourth verse, these proverbs will make even those without education smart. So the word of God is designed to make you smart. It's designed to make you smart. Amen. Glory to God. See, everything you're going to do now, you're going to do it on a smart level. Amen. A brilliant level. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless God. He said they will teach you. And get, get a, underline that word. They will teach you. They will teach you. The word of God is designed to teach you. The wisdom of God is, is, is designed to teach you. Christ wants to teach you. He, he is the key to understanding everything about God. Jesus Christ is. Amen. All right. So he said they will teach you. They will teach young people what they need to know and how to use what they have learned. Go to the next verse. Uh, even the wise uh, could become uh, wise about listening to these proverbs. They will, they will gain understanding and learn to solve difficult problems. Difficult problems. Amen. So the word of God is designed to help you. It's designed to teach you to solve difficult problems. Difficult problems. And the world today, uh, it is increasing. It's increasing with difficult problems that they can't solve. And the reason is, is because there's a lack of understanding the word of God, which produces the wisdom of God. Because wisdom is designed to solve problems, difficult problems, hard problems, problems that's been complex in your life from day one, what you've been struggling with, your, it, the, the uh, difficult problem of finding your identity. Now, that's one of the most ongoing problems that people are faced with today is their identity crisis. It's, it's, it has become what you might call one of the, the uh, uh, most uh, leading problems that man is faced with. They don't know who they are. They don't know who they are. And we can see that, that it's being played out in society in all different kinds of ways. Amen. Uh, we're having problems with men not knowing who they're, not knowing that they're, they're a man and women not knowing that they're a, a, a woman. And, and, and because of that, when you don't know who you are, you, 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 you don't function properly. You don't function properly. You, you give in to a spirit of dysfunction. And, and God's desire is for us to function on a level that it, 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 it just it, it, uh, it reflects the will of God in our lives or the plan of God in our lives. He wants us to function on a level that it, it, it reveals, it, it makes known God's will and purpose for our life and what we have been designed by God to do. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless God. All right. So we understand that the wisdom of God is the developer of our minds. It will develop your mind. And that's something that, you know, they had a slogan a while back say, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. That's, what the, that's the world come up with a, that type of slogan because they were saying that the, the mind has the, ability to, has the ability to control everything in your life. In, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the natural realm, they see that the mind is the center of everything. And, and we need to understand that we need to have the right mind. 
And the right mind comes from allowing wisdom to teach us how to function, how to think, how to act, how to respond to things. Amen. With the wisdom of God is the only thing that will, will be able to put us on the right course of making right decisions, uh, governing our thoughts, our suggestions, the, the, the wisdom of God. Amen. So that's the reason why we want to get into the wisdom of God and allow the wisdom of God to develop our minds, to work on our minds. Because in, in that, that place of your mind is what, it's what you call your thinking tank, your thinking area, amen, where you think at, amen. And the Bible says, so a, a person thinks in their heart, in their character, in their spirit, uh, so are they, amen. It's very important to get your thinking right. Get, make sure it's adjusted right. Make sure it's, it's, it's on target. Make sure it's going gonna, it's gonna to profit you. You don't, want your mind, you don't want to put your mind in a position where it wastes your life. You don't want to put your mind in a, you don't expose it to thoughts that's going to waste your, your life. Amen? Corrupt you and, 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 and make you feel lesser than make you think. That's what I want to say. Think you're lesser than what God created you to be. Amen? God created you to be just like him. God created you to be just like him. God created you to be like him. And for us to achieve that, he wants us to think like him. He wants us to think like God. Amen? So now, repeat, repeat this after me. I'm going to use my mind that God has given me to think like him. Now, the mind that he's given you is the mind of Christ. Once you become born again, spirit-filled, and become a disciple of Jesus Christ, God has given you the mind of Christ. But in God's will, when God first created us, he, he, he created us uh, with a, a desire for us to be able to think like him because he wants to think like him so we can fellowship with him. Amen. <laughs> You, you know, your, 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 the level of, your, uh, of the understanding of your mind, who you are, uh, and, and your mind can help you develop the sum total of who you are. That's why you want to get the right mind. You want to have a sound mind. Amen? Uh, you want to have a peaceable mind. You, want, you know, your mind can help you to develop who you are. Your mind can. And so that's why the enemy wants to come and attack our mind. He wants to blind our understanding. Uh, uh, we can't. We won't go to that. But you, this is a scripture, uh, Second Corinthians, the uh, second chapter and the fourth verse. It talks about the Second Corinthians, of the the. I think that's the fourth chapter and the fourth verse. Uh, uh, someone get that for me. Someone pull it up. I think that's what it is. I didn't give it to you, Minister Reggie, but uh, Second Corinthians. I think it's the fourth chapter and the fourth verse. It is. But for you that are listening, I want you to look at that. And see that what Satan, it says Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of our understanding. He's blinded the minds of our understanding. Satan has blinded the minds of our understanding. When he deceived Adam and Eve, he blinded the minds of their understanding. And you have to understand, that's what wisdom does. It helps to develop your, under, your, your mind to understand God's will and purpose for your life. That's what the wisdom of God does. It helps to develop your mind of the, 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 the will and understanding of God's purpose for your life. Amen? So the enemy is after your mind. You need to understand it. The enemy is after your mind. If he can get into your mind, if he can control and manipulate your mind, he will cause you to not to desire the wisdom of God. He will, he'll complicate things in your life. He'll frustrate you about things in your life. He'll darken your understanding, that, uh, to try to make you not see God's will and purpose for your life, and, and even see yourself being like God, seeing yourself being like God. But the wisdom of God, he will teach you that it is God's will for you to have the mind of Christ. The wisdom of God, it will teach you that. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we understand that it says, that the statement here is that the wisdom of God is the developer of our mind. It's going to work on our minds. Amen. It will develop our reality to the mind of Christ that God has given us. That it is God's will for us to have the mind of Christ. To have them now, a lot of uh, 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 
when there is a when there's a lack of not pursuing the word of God or the wisdom of God you will be void in that area of understanding that it is God's will for you to have the mind of Christ. The word of God said, let this mind, let this mind, this is wisdom. Remember, wisdom is what? The word of God. The wisdom is saying to us, let this mind be in you, which is that is second, second Corinthians, fourth chapter, and the fourth verse. Is that that's yeah, that's what I thought it was. Second, second Corinthians. You want you to get that second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and the fourth verse. Read it from the uh, New Living Translation version of the Bible. And it talks about the God of this world, which is Satan. The God of this world, which is Satan, he wants to blind the minds of our understanding to those that don't believe. He, he blinds our minds to those that don't believe they need the wisdom of God. To those that they don't believe they need the word of God to give them sound, stable wisdom. To give them sound, stable wisdom. The devil doesn't want you to believe that you can have a sound, stable lifestyle he don't want you to believe that he believed it you know everybody got to everybody got to go through trials and tribulation you don't have to go through trials and tribulation not every time amen you don't have to do it every time once you mess up one time go to God uh, really what you can do to, the the uh, the best way to 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 stay keep your mind sharp and smart is to go to the word of God the first time and ask God and, and go to the word of God about any decision you've got to make in life. Go to, go to the word of God and, and, and get into the word of God and the word of God will, will assist you, it'll help you, it'll teach you how to be successful in that decision that you're going to make. Amen? The word of God will do that. Amen? The word of God is designed to make you be successful. It wants you to be successful. It's counting on you to it's counting on you to to allow the word of God to teach you to be successful. Because God wants you to be successful. He wants you he, God, God doesn't delight in our failures. He doesn't delight in that. He doesn't, and God is not teaching you, God's not God is not trying to teach us anything through failures. God what God said, if you if you meditate upon my word both day and night you won't fail. If you meditate upon my word both day and night, you will not fail. Because meditating upon the word of God, it produces the wisdom of God and, uh, and, and, and it'll cause you to live a life where you're going to be prosperous and you're going to be successful. The word of God tells us, you can find it in, Jer in uh, Joshua 1 and 8. The, the word of God is designed to make sure if you will give yourself to meditating upon it both day and night, give yourself to the word of God, it assures you, it gives you absolute assurance that you will prosper and you will be successful in life. It guarantees you that. I want you to understand, the word of God comes with a guarantee to those that meditate upon it. No meditation in the word of God, no guarantee that you're going to be successful. You're on your, you're on your own. Amen. But we were never designed by God to live on our own. We were designed by him to stay hooked up with him, to stay connected to him. Amen. God, uh, uh, I've heard, I heard a lot of stuff in my coming up and everything, my, my time here on earth. I, I've heard a lot of, the, some people say, God too busy to answer them little small questions or small problems you have. That's not, you can't even find it in scripture. God wants you to come to him. Matter of fact, the word of God tells us that God wants us to live in his presence. Stay, stay connected with him. Stay joined to him. Amen. This is, what, this, this is what wisdom teaches us. It teaches us that God created us to stay fully engaged in a relationship with him. Fully engaged in a relationship with him. Amen. Do you not know that God enjoys being around you? <laughs> he, he, see, he enjoys being, he, he wouldn't have created you if he didn't enjoy being around you. He loves you. He's concerned about you. Amen. And, only, you, and, 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 and you will find that in the word of God. 
that God loves you. He's concerned about you. He's mindful of you. He says, above all, he wished that you prosper. He designed for you to prosper, to be in good health, even as your soul, your mind prospers. Amen. Glory to God. Give your mind to God, and God will turn you on to a prosperous life. Give your mind to God, and God will turn you on to his prosperous life for you. Give your mind to God, and God will turn you on to his prosperous life for you. Give your mind to God. You're going to give it to somebody. Amen. Adam and Eve, they gave their mind to the devil. And we say, well, how do you, in it, in it you, 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 you can tell who you've given your mind to by what comes out of your mouth, your lifestyle, your behavior. You can tell what you've given your mind to. Amen. Glory to God. Because when you give your mind to, to the word of God, you're going to speak the word of God. You're going to be hungry for the things of God. Amen. You, you, you understand that you, you understand that, that, I, that God holds the key to all the riches you need in life. He holds the key to it. And it's in the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God will teach you how to be successful, how to be prosperous without any frustration. Amen. I'm telling you. You, you, you can go through without making it. You can, you can take the wisdom of God and it'll, it'll give you a, a stress-free life without any stress, without any struggles. Amen? The word of God. The wisdom of God. So it develops our reality to the mind of God. And that's something, you know, you want to get a reality. <laughs> what really, reality is, is, is the the. The reality of the word of God gives you absolute truth. The reality of the word of God, it gives you absolute truth. Truth with no gray areas. Truth that God is not going to change his promises towards you. He's not going to fail you. God is faithful. And because God is faithful, God's word is faithful. When you're reading the word of God, you're reading the most faithful book that you'll ever read. It won't fail you. It won't disappoint you. It won't let you down. But the thing is you've got to be willing to give your mind to it. You don't let nothing else come into your mind but the word of God. You don't let nothing else come into your mind but the word of God. You let the word of God filter all thoughts, all imagination that you've got to deal with. You let the word of God filter them. It tells, you know, you, it'll tell you, yeah, this is coming, but you don't need this here. This is coming, you need this here. Amen. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to, what, what, the, the word of God is going to always pro produce in you a deeper relationship with God, a deeper understanding of God's will and purpose for your life. And it'll satisfy you. It'll satisfy you. Amen. All right. Let's go to... Uh, 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 first Corinthians, the first chapter and the thirtieth verse. Now, what, 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 now we done, we done laid the, the groundwork that 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 in Proverbs one through three and five, reading from the easy read version of the Bible, it tells us that that, that wisdom wants to help us. It wants to help us. It wants, the the wisdom of, when you the wisdom of God will relate to us just like the the, the Spirit of God relates to us. It, the, the Spirit of God, it wants to comfort us. It wants to teach us. It wants to strengthen us. It wants to be an, an advocate for us. And that's what wisdom wants to do. Wisdom wants to stand in the gap of your life. He, wisdom wants to be the go-between your success or your failure. But if you choose wisdom, the wisdom of God, you will never fail. You will never fail. It's impossible to have the wisdom of God operating in the wisdom of God, giving your mind to the wisdom of God, and have a lifestyle of failure. It won't happen. It can't. Because there is no failure in the word of God, in the wisdom of God, in the mind of God, in the heart of God. God has no plans for you to fail. None whatsoever. He, he's the best source of success. And he wants you to succeed. He wants you to succeed in everything. 
God got your back in everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. Glory to God. So wisdom, we're going to look at uh, 1 Corinthians, the, 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 the first chapter and the third verse. We're getting this from the easy read version of the Bible. Now, in this scripture, I want you to see that, get an understanding uh, that wisdom is a person. It's a person. And it's, and it's only one person, and that person is Jesus Christ. Wisdom is only one person. It's not many persons. It's one. It has different functions. It, 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 it has different functions, different roles and everything, but there are one person operating this here. You have to understand that wisdom comes from God through Jesus Christ. Wisdom comes, through God, comes from God through Jesus Christ. Amen? And the wisdom of God only comes through the word of God. And the word of God is Jesus Christ. He is the fulfillment, the completeness of God's word, Jesus Christ is. He's a perfect example of God's word. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, not high Christian, not religion. It's Jesus Christ, the person of Jesus Christ. All right, says so the first Corinthians, the first chapter, and the 30th verse. Reading from the easy read version of the Bible, says, It is God who has made you part of Christ, Jesus. It is God that has made, we can, I want you to understand, we can't, God has to deal with, we, I want to say this here, we have to allow God to deal with our minds, to deal with our spirit, soul, and bodies for we can under, get an understanding that, we, that, that it is God's will for us to be joined or, be, or, to, be belong, or to belong to Christ. That, that Christ is the center of our lives. When you, get, when you get him, you don't need another part. He's the part that's whole. You don't need nothing else. Amen. You can take the word of God and, 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 and meditate upon it both day and night, and you don't need nothing else to be successful. Amen. So, so it, says, it says, it is God who has made you part of Christ Jesus. God made us part of Christ. He made us. He intentionally shaped us and formed us, called us into Christ Jesus through his word. Amen. And Christ has become for us, look at this here, Christ has become for us, those that are allowed, that it comes to the reality that it is God's will for us to be part, for, for, for us to be partners or, or, or belong to Christ, to belong to him, to surrender ourselves, to give ourselves to him. Look at what happens here. He says, and Christ has become for us wisdom from God. Wisdom from God. In other words, Christ Jesus is God's wisdom for us. Christ Jesus is the word of God that we apply in our lives that causes us to be successful. That you're able to solve every problem, every difficult problem that come up on you in life. When you go to Christ Jesus, you can find out who you are. You can go to him and you can find out uh, your worth and your value. You're not just somebody that just, you know, you're not a, a problem here. You're a problem solved. You're not a mishap. Amen. You are uniquely designed by God through Christ Jesus. And you belong to him through the finished work of Jesus Christ in your life that you're willing to believe and put your trust in. That you're willing to believe and put your trust in. So we understand here, according to the word of God, that God sent Jesus Christ to become his wisdom for us. His wisdom for us. He's the one that solves difficult problems in our lives. The most important problem that all of mankind had is that they was lost without God. Jesus Christ came and solved that problem. He joined us back. He reconciled us back. To our heavenly Father, He brought us back to our understanding that Genesis one and twenty six through twenty eight is still is accessible to us today. We still can have God's image. It is it, 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 still in the it's still in the heart of God for us to possess His image and His likeness 
and for us to have dominion, for us to be blessed, be fruitful, to multiply, and to increase, and to be a replenisher in this earth realm. It's still in the heart of God. It's still accessible. But it comes through our faith in Jesus Christ. Receiving Jesus Christ as the, as, as the person that reconciles us back. See what, let's go on, we're going to see. He is the reason we are right with God and pure enough to be in his presence. See, we stand in the presence of God, not by our worth, not by our knowledge, not by our understanding, not by what we've done, but all because of what Jesus Christ, what, what God did through Jesus Christ to, to reconnect us back to Genesis 1 and 26 to 28. You need to read that and really, really, this was, this was God, this was, this what was in the heart of God when he created us. He wanted us to be just like him. He wants us to have his image and his likeness so we could fellowship with him. See, God's deepest desire is for us to fellowship with him. And the devil's deepest desire is to keep us away from him. Amen? So we, we, want, we want to see that. Amen? We want to look and see how that. That it is God's will for us to be in the, uh, the image and likeness of God and to have, have the, the, the wisdom of God operating in every area of our lives. Amen? So we understand. Let's, let's finish that scripture out, and then we're going we're gonna to have to uh, stop right there. Amen? He is the reason uh, we are right with God. I always remember that, that, that Jesus is the reason why you're right with God, you're, that you're in right relationship with him, you're in right standing with him because of your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And you got to have faith in that. He says, uh, pure enough to be in his presence. Uh, Christ is the one who set us free from sin. Now, sin is that thing that separates us from God. And Christ is the person that reconnected us, that delivered us and set us free from the sin that was, uh, was holding us in bondage, that was, was, was confusing our, our, our minds, making us think that, you know, we're this, this sinner that's eternally lost. No, 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 no. He came to set us free from, from the sin and from practicing in that sin. And the real sin is unbelief. Unbelief, that you believe that you can't, you can't think like God. And you'd be surprised that people today, even in church, it's a puzzle in their mind about them having the ability, that God has given them the ability to think like God. And that's what the wisdom of God does. It, 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 it enables you to think like God. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I have received the wisdom of God. Therefore, I think like God. And neighbor... I didn't do it. Jesus did it. But what I did, I put my faith in what Jesus did. He freed me from the spirit of unbelief so I can believe freely. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Give the Lord a hand clap. We want to encourage you this morning, amen, that you uh, watched us here on uh, social media and everything. We want to encourage you to understand that Jesus Christ, the very wisdom of God, has set you free from the spirit of unbelief. You can believe now. You can believe that you can think like God. You can believe that you, you have the wisdom of God. You, you have the intelligence of God. Because what God did, he put it all in Christ. And then those that would believe, those that would receive, he put Christ in them and causes them to have the wisdom of God. And cause them to have the wisdom. It is God's will for you to have his wisdom. He don't want you to be plagued down with problems. The challenges that's dis disconnecting you from God's destiny for your life. I know you want to be free. You're tired of carrying around uh, bondages. And I want to say this to you. Once you get hold of the wisdom of God and begin to meditate upon it and accept it into your life, you are free from any skeletons in your closet. Matter of fact, you don't have any skeletons in your closet because you're not in a closet. You don't have a closet. You have a, you, what, you're in Christ now. And you're free from everything. So we want to encourage you to believe that this morning because it's according to your faith. And that's what, that's what believing is all about, is exercising your faith. 
exercising your faith. And God wants you to exercise your faith in him. So we believe in God this morning that you, you've done that and you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. We want you to be encouraged, amen, to be strengthened, uh, to just believe God and to trust God. You're not foolish anymore. You're operating on the wisdom of God. You're not foolish anymore. You're not a fool. You believe in God. You trust God. You believe that God did send his son, Jesus Christ, to set you free. So we want you to just accept that this morning. Accept it right now. I want you to repeat this after me. Jesus, I accept you. I accept your finished work in my life. I accept the reality that you have set me free from sin, sickness, disease, and poverty. You've set me free. And I receive it by faith. I repent of my sins. I repent of not believing in you, not trusting in you. I repent of it. And now I'm going to change the way I think. I'm going to take the word of God and apply it to my mind, and it's going to transform me. I'm believing that right now. So if you did that, you made that, that confession, you, you, I want you to understand, right now, that's all you have to do, just confess it and believe it in your heart. And it's done take, it has taken place. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Don't look at, don't go to your feelings and your emotions. Go to the word of God that is the, the most reliable source of knowledge and understanding about God's will and purpose for your life. Go to it. Get into the Word of God and let the Word of God make wisdom known to you. Let it make wisdom known to you. So I want to encourage you to do that, amen. Just believe God. And we know that you have. So I want to let you know that we're here for about 30 minutes. We'd like for you to, if you want to give us a call to, to pray with you and encourage you more, to strengthen you and you living in the wisdom of God and allowing the wisdom of God to teach you. We're here for you. We, 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 our deepest desire is for you to to connect fully with the wisdom of God. God's plan for your life. God's plan for your life. I decree and I declare right now that you are free from the spirit of fear. You're free from it. Because that's what wisdom does. That's what the wisdom of God does. It, it encourages you to understand that when you commit yourself to the Lord, all of your fears are gone. He takes them away from you. He takes them away from you. When you commit yourself to him. We want you to be, have full confidence in that. What, what I'd like for you to do is, is go and meditate upon Psalms 37 and 34. Let that speak to you. That you, that you made a decision, that you, you, you sought the Lord, you've been inquired of him, and he have delivered you from all fear. Fear can never manipulate you and control you anymore now. Because you make a commitment, you made a commitment that you're going to inquire of the Lord. You're going to seek him out diligently. And he's going to reveal to you that he's dealt with all your fear, with all fears that want to attack you. And fear is not yours. You don't have no fear. You have Christ. You have Christ, the crucifier of fear, the deliverer of fear. It's gone. Amen. Well, I'll let you know that we love you. We appreciate God for you. We're looking for you to uh, come out and be with us here at Dominion Life Worship Center. I always remember there is a warm seat of welcome here especially for you. I want to encourage you to come out and be a part of some of these live services uh, and just get fully connected, amen, in the wisdom of God. Amen. So we'll see you next time here at Dominion Life Worship Center where Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Bless God. Glory to God. We'll pick up on, on that next time. But about the, we're still talking about the, the wisdom of God. We really want, want you to get a good understanding and, and, and 